Hello everyone, my name is Mr. N Jersey and welcome to my channel. In this video we are back with the next episode of the survival series here in Stormworks version 1. Now in the last episode we managed to build this train and I think it's looking really pretty cool. Uh, so in this episode what I want to do is I want to finalize the actual driving and the main cabin here. I want to get all the components in there that I want including some panels, some screens, some controllers, all the cool stuff. Uh, also going to get the engines up and running. I've kind of thought about it. I don't think we need all three of those diesel engines running, uh, but we'll just see. We might be able to switch one off uh, or two off, depending on how much we need, uh, which would be pretty cool. So we'll get that all connected and hopefully we'll be able to do a few test runs uh, with this actual train today. So it'll be pretty cool. So let's jump it straight back into the workbench. And the first thing I want to get started with is going to probably be the interior here. Now in the last episode we got pretty far where I've decided that I wanted screens on the left and right. Uh, I wanted a central panel here. So in this episode I'm going to carry on doing that. Um, uh, pretty much as I said before I want to get a screen that kind of, well not screen but a panel that kind of goes down here. Uh, along with that is I've got a couple other things that I want. I'm thinking of switching this out for one by one screens. That way I can switch it to some other things that I'm looking for. Uh, and then I'm thinking of keeping this one. It's just like a map screen uh, that you can use just to look at maps. Another cool thing I was thinking about is here at the top, I want to have maybe a slanted panel. So it's like slanted down towards the driver. Uh, so you could maybe go here, look up, and that way you could see maybe some engine information. Maybe turn the engines on and off. Uh, see the fuel levels and things like that. Whereas down here, you would just have the controls for driving the train. Uh, on the right would maybe just be some screens with some data, uh, maybe the frequency to change the tracks, maybe some information about the uh, master slave of a train. Uh, and then as I said on the left of the map screen. So I'm going to work on that now. I'm going to get all the panels in and I'll meet you guys back uh, for all the logic part. All right, so I have just gone and finished setting up the main cabin here with pretty much everything that I want. Uh, I haven't really connected anything. All I've done is just put some panels and some dials down and some keypads and some displays. And I've gone and named everything, kind of just gotten my layout of what I want. So you can see at the back here, we've got three uh, electrical breakers. I haven't connected them yet. We're going to be doing that just now. So I've got one for the main system. So that will turn the electricity on for the entire actual train. Uh, we've got another one, which is backup power. So we'll have a spare battery just in case. Uh, and then we'll also have one for heaters. So we'll get the heaters to, um, to turn on and off by themselves. We'll probably put one of my climate systems in maybe like over there, uh, but we'll get that to turn on and off, but we'll have a main circuit breaker where if we don't really want them on, we can actually turn them off manually. Uh, along with that, we have the passenger seat here. At the top is going to be the engine control panel. So you can see I've got three actual component panels here. Uh, the first one, you can see engine one, it will have a status light to say if the engine's running or not. Uh, it will have the RPS and the temperature. Same for engine two, same for engine three. So we can control the engines mainly up here. So if we're generating too much power, we can turn off engine two and three uh, and vice versa. Uh, down on the left will be, as I said earlier, my map screen, which is over here. Uh, on the right hand side we'll have a frequency changer so that will be allow us to actually change the frequency of the signals uh, i'm not too sure what i want to use this for just yet i might use that for radio uh, once again i'm not 100 sure just yet uh, and then we also have the auto gps drive so that will allow us to go on the map and say hey i want the train to drive to this set point and we'll enter it on the keypad We'll then flip a switch and it will drive to that set point. This is going to be extremely useful. Uh, for example, if we want to drive all the way over to another island, we can just hit the set point and it will drive that way. Uh, then we have the main panel over here. So we have speed. Uh, we'll have another display here. Once again, I'm not too sure what I want to put on here just yet. I'm thinking a camera, or maybe a camera facing forwards, uh, another camera facing down at the connector, and maybe another one at the back of the train. Uh, so that will be another panel there. Uh, we've got fuel, battery, we got generator one, generator two, and we also have time till empty. So I'm going to use a mic controller for that. Uh, release the front connector, release the rear connector, uh, brakes. So that will obviously just be a simple indication light saying, hey, the brakes are on, be careful. They are going to be automatically controlled by one of the mic, control mic controllers. And we've got a systems on and off. Uh, and then we've got a train direction, whether we're going forwards or backwards. Uh, these two things are very important for my uh, slave master train system that I built in a separate video. Once again, if you guys want to go check that out, definitely do. I've got a full tutorial on how to set that up. And we're going to be using those mic controllers. Uh, so this is very important. This tells the train 
if it's the master train obviously we only have one train at the moment but we might want to upgrade in the future uh, and then it also tells it what direction it's going in uh, which is also very important whether it's going forwards uh, or if the actual train is faced in the wrong direction that is really important too. Uh, we've got some heaters in the ground obviously for temperature and then I've got some speakers over there for the radio system that we're going to be putting in here. Uh, I haven't changed anything else, everything else as is. I think it's looking pretty cool. I think it's a nice little driving compartment to be fair, uh, nicely detailed. Obviously we will add more details, we'll do some painting also in here, we'll make it look a little better. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the basics. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna get the mic controller in that we need. Uh, for all of this so bring us back into the workbench and we're going to go and look for i think it's the nj got quite a few so i got the train limited speed controller this is a really cool one so that will pretty much drive the train at a certain speed uh, that we wanted to drive at uh, i haven't really decided where i'm going to put all this logic maybe we can stick all the logic inside here it might be a cool cool thing to do so actually you know what i'm going to put it on the roof for now that way you guys can see what i'm doing and then we'll move it we'll move it underneath for later so we're going to put in pink so you guys can see that that's the limited speed uh we're also going to go and get let's see what else i want i want the manual gps train so that is very important uh what else do we need we need the master slave system so we're going to get that and we're also going to get i think i have some generator controllers yeah, auto generates controllers. We'll get three of those, and that's what's going to control the engine. So one, two, and three. So that's what we're working with in terms of controllers at the moment. Uh, just literally just for driving and obviously all the other systems that we want in here. As I said earlier, we also need a map screen. So let's do, I think I have my NJ Marine map screen that I can use for this. I also have some radio controllers. So we're gonna jump into the selection grid. We're gonna go and load content. All right, so we've gone and loaded up the actual radio one and we've also loaded up the map one. So pretty much all the logic that we need for this build is gonna be here. Um, so I'm gonna start connecting everything that I want to connect. Um, so we're gonna start off, let's go into the logic and let's start doing everything that we want. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually just gonna sort out the electricity for everything. Now you'll notice that there is some electricity already connected. That's for the pivots inside the cockpit to pretty much make all the panels fit. Uh, so we're gonna go from one of our batteries over to all of our different panels over here. So we're gonna go into our first one, which is the main systems, okay? And we're also gonna go into our heaters. So we're gonna go from that, uh, and we can obviously get all of this stuff connected up also. So we're just literally gonna connect all of these batteries together. I'm gonna leave, I think, two batteries uh, not connected and that way these two batteries will be for our backup supply of power if we ever need it so those are those two batteries there okay so that is very important we got that connected uh, we also got our two electrical drive motors and we have our generators so the generators can pretty much get connected directly to the battery set there's no point of not connecting them uh, and then from our little circuit breaker here we can pretty much just go from the backup into the main one and then from the main one we can then start connecting to pretty much all the electronics inside this actual creation. So we're gonna to go to all of that there. Uh, we're also gonna to go to anything else that we need to inside here. The last thing we need to connect is the electricity to the heaters. Okay, so there's just those two little heaters there. Okay, so that's what we got so far. Uh, I also just noticed that I do need to connect the actual gearboxes down there. So we'll get that sorted up in a few minutes too. And I also wanna connect the actual electricity that goes to these two um, electrical engines that are gonna be powering the train. Cool, so that takes care of the actual logic in terms of electricity. Uh, the next thing we need to do is of course go and connect everything we need for these microprocessors. Okay, now, as I said before, these microprocessors are relatively quite easy to work with. Uh, what we're going to start with is I think let's start with the actual engine ones. So you can see here, we've got all of our little engine controllers. Uh, what we're going to do next is I'm gonna do the piping for all of these engines. Uh, guys, you guys know how to do piping for engines. So I'm not gonna spend too much time explaining everything you need to know on how to connect engines up. Uh, once again, we've got tutorials on that, so we're not gonna spend too much time. So I'm gonna go do the piping for the engines, make sure they all get connected up, and of course, go to our generators, and we'll do the cooling, the exhaust, all those other kind of things, and I'll meet you back when I'm done. 
All right, so we are back. I've just finished uh, connecting all the engines here. You can see there's quite a lot of piping going on. Uh, what I've done is I've put some heat sinks on the outside of the train. Uh, when we get enough money, I might just actually fill all of this in just for pretty much aesthetics, make it look pretty cool. But you can see some heat sinks there. Um, they all work quite nicely, I think. Along with that, our exhaust and our air goes up to the top. I've just added some uh, actual pretty much some fluid ports here at the top. One is for air, one is for f exhaust. Uh, and underneath is where we have all of our gearboxes. Once again, some more pipes. I've got a fluid level and also a uh, fluid spawner underneath here. I've connected all the other pipes together. I've also even got a refueling option over here for us. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just gonna connect the fluid levelers to that and that. So that's going to allow us to see how much fuel we have. And obviously we can refuel, take fuel out, depends what we wanna do there should be fuel at pretty much all of the all of the train hangers so i'm not really worried too much about that uh, along with that we can now actually get all the logic connected for these engines and actually test to see if they're going to work so remember i said earlier we got the three generator controllers so we're going to be using that to control these engines and pretty much we're going to get them to turn on when the battery is low enough and they're going to turn off when the battery is obviously high enough and then we also have a manual way of turning them on and off using these panels here at the front i'm just going to double check i've got electricity i do good so we've got that all set uh let's get all the logic done for these engines so we have the starter for engine one we have the starter for engine two starter for engine three uh, we're going to get the throttle out. Cool. Throttle out. That was actually to the wrong one. Let's just unconnect that. That was the electrical engine. And uh, number three. Okay, so as the throttle's done, uh, we need to get the engine RPS. So engine RPS, engine RPS, and engine RPS. Along with that is the temperature. We then need to get the power that's coming from the generators. So those are those generators over there. So I'm just gonna go there, there, and there. Okay, so we've got the power from the generators. Uh, we also need the battery. So I'm just gonna take one battery considering they're all linked up in series. They should share the same amount of power through all of them. So we've got that all done. So that's pretty much all the logic there is, or the basic logic at least. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is actually go onto the controller and you can see we can set the RPS that we want. Let's start with 10 RPS. Let's see how much power it actually produces. And you can see it's going to turn on when the battery is 0.8 and it's going to turn off when it's one. Okay, so that's the same setting on all of these. Uh, another cool feature with this is we can go over to this panel here. So you can see I've got three individual panels. We're going to go on to where we can turn them on and off. We're going to say number two is to turn them on and off. Okay, so number two and number two. Okay, so that means that corresponds to what we have inside here from number two. So if we go into this controller, you'll see that over here, number two is to turn on and off. Uh, and then we got these different readouts. So we'll have a look here. So battery is readout number one. We don't need that yet. Uh, number two is the PID. We don't need that. Number three is the temperature, so we want that. And number four is the RPS. So we want three and four from each one of these controllers. So we're just gonna close out of here and go back to this panel. You can see that we can now name this. So RPS was number four and number three was temp. So we're gonna do the same on the other two panels. And the last thing we need is also some way to obviously have this indicator on when the engines are running. Okay, so kind of like a threshold gate, uh, checking to see if the RPS is above, let's say nine or above five or something like that. So we're gonna go into this again. I'm gonna go over to where it says engine running. I'm gonna name this number three. Okay, so I'm gonna go and do that on all the controllers, number three, and this one is gonna be number three. I'm then gonna go into the mic controller and I'm just gonna edit them ever so slightly. So I'm just gonna make sure that there is an output here that's going to tell the system that the engines are running. So we're just gonna extend it a little bit like that. And we're gonna come onto this and we're going to now go and check the RPS. We're gonna grab a threshold gate like so. And we're gonna say if the RPS is above six and it's uh, between six and let's say a hundred, just gonna grab the RPS. Then we're gonna output on number three. Okay, so we're gonna update that. Perfect. And we're going to repeat the same process for the other two controllers. Cool, now that we've got that done, the last thing we need to do is just connect the composites. So we're gonna go from this panel here, which is engine one, to the first controller, which is our engine one. We're going to send it back, and we're going to just repeat the same process for all three of these panels. And we're gonna bring it back, and we're gonna bring it back. Okay, so that means that is now all connected. 
we should be able to theoretically go and see if these are going to turn on or off okay now at the moment of course they aren't going to turn on because it's going to think the battery is high enough okay so it's not going to turn those engines on so we want a quick way just to test that and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go literally from our let's see what we could use here i'm actually going to change the seat i think let's go to just a normal seat that actually has got a joystick on it so we're going to go to that type of seat and from there i'm just going to use our wns and i'm going to go directly into our electrical motors i'm going to change that at a later point but it's just now for testing to see if this is going to work or not Yeah, okay, so we're going to throw the power on i'm going to jump in here let's go and throw brakes on okay i can definitely see the brakes are working because you see we aren't moving and i can hear those electrical engines you can see at the back there can you see the power is dropping down now so i want to get that quite low and now you you're probably wondering well, why aren't the engines turning on remember we had these flip switches up here so i could actually turn the engines on and off as i wanted to first one up and running now it has gone and turned the second one on and the third on which i didn't want it to do so one way you can resolve that is to put some clutches between the engines so i'm actually going to go and do that so that not all three engines are running at the same time but you can see they are running the temperature is going a little bit quite high for my liking the rps is almost perfect at 10 rps let's go and see our battery are we actually generating any power is the question we are it's just taking quite a long time for it to generate so what we might want to do is we might want to configure those uh, gearboxes to be on a higher ratio that way it will produce more torque and in theory will then go and of course produce more power for the engine so that's all working i'm just going to go put some clutches in i'm also going to change the gearbox settings i'll meet you guys back and see what the performance is like all right so i've gone and changed the settings for the gearboxes and i've also added clutch um, for each one of the engines so they shouldn't all turn on when we actually get set off here so i'm just going to go and throw the brakes on again and we're also going to get some electricity on let's get the brakes all the way full let's increase our throttle okay you can see we are definitely draining our power there so i'm going to drain it down to about 50 percent battery and then we're going to go and get rid of the throttle that means our power should be reduced now uh, and you can see none of this is turned on but if we get engine one okay so engine one currently doesn't have enough power to actually turn those gearboxes so we need to go and lower the amount of power that the actual gearboxes or the ratio on the gearboxes if i throw engine two engine three so they don't have enough so we're just going to go over to the gearboxes here you can see i've got a bank of them here uh let's go onto them and let's set them down to maybe a three to two and let's see if that's going to help the engines i think it might uh, if not we can reduce it down further obviously we want that ratio to be as high as possible so we actually produce the most amount of power so we're going to throw it up brakes on so we actually stop here start reducing our power here let's throw one engine on cool you can see that engine is up and running it's sitting around four five rps but it should actually be recharging us so let's go and have a look look at that so it's actually recharging us quite nice and quickly now if we were to throw on engine number two okay so we need to have a look at why this one didn't turn on uh because this, the rps was too low engine number three Look how quickly we're producing power there. And the engine's actually running at quite a low RPS too. So I could in theory take the brakes off here and start going forwards. And we could probably do some testing to see how long this would last. But it looks like it's recharging while we're moving, which is what I wanted it to do. Okay, we are losing a little bit of power there when I'm going in reverse. cool but remember we won't be using full throttle to always go forwards here um, but yeah we should be producing more than enough power with those three engines running at the same speed if we want to we can increase the rps if we want to also so they can run at a high rps remember the higher the rps they run at uh, the more chance of fuel they're probably going to be using um, so you can see that is sucking fuel a little bit as this isn't the most fuel efficient vehicle 
to be honest, I don't think. But once again, we're going to do some testing. I haven't done absolutely any testing with this uh, before this video, so we can always adjust things, uh, move it down, move it up as we need to. But for now, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, so the next thing I want to work on is going to be all the different things. So the uh, master slave system we're going to work on. We're also going to get the limited speed system on and we're also going to get the manual GPS uh, system in there. Those are pretty straightforward. Once again, I've got videos on each one of these different pieces. So once again, if you want to learn how to use this, definitely just go and check those videos out. Uh, it's a full tutorial on how to use each one of these and if you build the microcontroller yourself. If you don't want to build it, just download it from our workshop page and slap it into your train. You'll be good to go. Cool, so I've just gone and finished connecting everything up. I've added a little radio here just for the master slave system. I also added a GPS block uh, for our GPS manual drive train system. Uh, so in theory, we should be able to go and spawn this in and see if it all is working. So let's jump inside. We're going to get the electrical systems on. Uh, that should mean let's give it engine one, engine two. So it should only allow those two engines to run. Um, cool, let's then do, we're gonna turn this coach on or this engine on we don't need anything else we should in theory be able to head off so desired speed is 20. so i'm actually just going to slow it down here because i'm a little bit worried about hitting this okay i might want to change the first speed setting okay we are connected to this one which is great uh let's go forward so 20 great we're maintaining 20 let's up it to 50. great we're upping it to 50. perfect these engines might turn on just now let's up it again to 80. Cool, we're 880. Nice, we're running quite quickly. I need to get some lights in here, definitely. Um, but that is all working, which I'm really happy about. Nice. Okay, let's drop it down. Let's put it at zero. Great, it's now dropped down zero. Uh, let's test out the manual GPS system. So we are... Where are we currently? So let's tell it that I want to drive to this waypoint. Okay, so I'm going to tell it that waypoint where I want to go. We're going to say drive to that waypoint and we're going to tell it to auto drive. Okay, so now it's driving itself. Picking up its speed. Distance to waypoints. Let's see if it actually is going to go to its waypoint and stop for us. It should. And we're getting closer. It's dropping its speed. We're almost at the waypoint. Look at that. Are we still moving? We are. So it overshot it a little bit. So we just need to configure that waypoint system to have a little bit more of a, uh, a little bit more buffer on it. But that's working. So I'm really happy with that. Cool. So I'm going to bring this back to the workbench and see what else we have to do. So we're back at the workbench. I think that is probably a great place to end this episode off with. I have done a ton um, of C just off while we were not recording in terms of getting everything done and connected here. Um, but I think it's going pretty well. I'm quite happy with how we've got everything set up. Uh, I still need to add a few more things onto here and get a few more other things connected like the front connectors there and also the time till empty uh, for the fuel. Uh, we also need to get the frequency done, I need to get the map in, I also need to get the temperature panels in, and I think I also need to connect the indicator lights there. Um, but yeah, I think that's a great place to end this episode off with. Uh, you guys let me know what you think of the train so far, what you think of mainly the cockpit and how it drives. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments in the video description below. And until next week, we will see you very soon.